Snake bites are of a much greater concern than insect bites, and we do have people that call 911 for snake bites. Um, it is something that should be evaluated in the emergency department. When you're trying to figure out whether it's a poisonous snake or not, um, don't try to catch the snake, just leave it alone. If you can get a picture of it, great. Otherwise, just leave it alone and let it go on its way. They generally will only bite if they feel threatened. So if you don't mess with them, they generally don't mess with you. And when you're out in the woods, you're in their home, so just leave them alone. But if somebody is bitten by a snake, there's a few things we can look at. If you can see the snake, you want to look at the head. Generally, poisonous snakes have a kind of a diamond or triangular shaped head that is larger than its neck. If you want to get really close down and look at its eye, you can look to see if it has sort of a um, elliptical or cat's eye pupil, and it may have a pit between the nose and the mouth. Uh, so these are some ways you can look to see if the, it's a poisonous snake. It might be easier just to look at the wound. If it has one or two puncture wounds, it's probably a pit viper poisonous snake. If it's a row of teeth, it's a non-poisonous snake. The exception to that is the coral snake, and their fangs are actually in the back of their mouth, so they tend to bite and hold on and try to chew and get this poison into you. But we, by far, see many more pit viper snake bites than we do coral snake bites, and these are going to be rattlesnakes, cottonmouths or water moccasins, and copperheads. Now, the, the bite of a snake is, um, is painful, and poisonous snakes are much more painful, so they're going to have an unusual amount of pain with it. And it's, it's something that can cause patients to, to really panic. And that's uh, something we need to, to try to do is calm the patient down. Um, and I know it's really hard to do after you're just bitten by a poisonous snake. But try to calm down, relax. We don't want the poison to spread. Um, and other than that, there's really not a whole lot we do for the snake bite until we get to the emergency department. Now we can do things like make sure the snake's not gonna bite us, so watch for scene safety. Uh, make sure the snake is away. Wash the area with a little bit of soap and water if you want. Um, remove any jewelry, um, anything that might be constricting to the area. And if it is starting to swell, you can encircle it, draw a little circle around the, the swollen area to see how quickly it will um, kind of, that spreading or that, that swelling will spread. Um, keep the bite area below the level, the level of the heart and um, transport. Uh, currently, we don't put tourniquets. There's a little bit of debate about some sort of constricting band or ACE wrap around it, so contact medical control and see what they advise, or contact poison control and see what they advise. Do not put ice, don't use any electrical therapy, don't suck the poison out of it. Um, we don't do anything like that for snake bites. Generally, just keep the person still. You could even put a splint on the arm or leg to try to minimize the movement with it and try to keep them calm, watch their vital signs. It's kind of rare, but you could look for signs of anaphylaxis and then transport to a center or a hospital that has um, the antivenom. And you can uh, find that out from poison control or from your medical direction, which hospital you should go to.